the sun and summertime temps are here in Chicago and so is the number one team in the WNBA meeting number two between Los Angeles and Chicago on this Sunday evening. Thanks so much for joining us, Stephen Bardo and Lisa Byington with you and happy Father's Day everyone, especially to my father, Robert Byington and to you, Stephen Bardo, happy Father's Day. Thank you very much, Lisa, I appreciate that. And to one Harold Bardo too. Oh, you're good, good right? memory, yes. Right, Harold and Bob are two of our loyal viewers. We can't, we can't right. miss those guys out. <laughs> so we approach this game here with the Chicago's dropped the last three. They took a West Coast road trip, dropped all three, part of the problem Problem all year long and certainly on that road trip was their defense. Yeah, it's really been inconsistent for them, Lisa. And, you know, they've, they've had stretches where they play solid defense and then things seem to just fall apart. You see the numbers in the last five games, the sky are 11th in field goal percentage defense in the WNBA. That's not going to get it done if you don't outscore your opponents and they are not scoring the basketball so they need to turn it up on the defensive end yeah scoring the basketball they can do it from three land but that's been a little bit inconsistent they did hit 13 threes against seattle their last time out that kept them in the game but the last time they played los angeles they shot about 13 percent from three yeah and they've got to be careful because sometimes leads on the three too much they don't have very good balance again like you said in seattle they shot lights out and when you're rolling you can take more opportunities like that but when you're struggling you've got to mix it up get to the free throw line they may have to be a little bit more aggressive in trying to get to the rim today against the la spark as i mentioned they were three of 23 the last time they took on los angeles by the way uh, back home here for L.A. and back home for one of Naperville's finest, Candace Parker, who seems to save a little bit of extra here every time she comes to Chi-Town. She really does. And I think the most complete player in the WNBA, her numbers bear that out. She's also averaging almost four assists a game. She's shooting 55 percent from the field and 47 percent from three. So having an outstanding season going to be tough to keep her down this evening. Well, L.A. just about a week ago took game one in this series by 18. Round two to come from the Windy City. The tip is coming up next. Our thanks to public address announcer Ray Clay for the starting lineups brought to you by CIBC. Personal banking, commercial banking, wealth management. You can visit them at CIBC.com. It'll be quickly. You saw it sleep. Nador, DeShields, and Williams with Parker coming off the bench as well as Faulkner coming off the bench. Los Angeles, Sparks, Sims, and Gray, and Parker, and Beard, and Ogumake. Gray right now ranked third, right behind Courtney Vandersloot and Sue Bird in terms of assists per game, one of the better point guards in the league this year. Yeah, she's got a lot of talent to get the rock to as well. Brian Agler. The head coach for Los Angeles, the all-time winningest women's pro basketball coach in the United States, picked up over 300 wins in the ABL and here in the WNBA. And these two head coaches know each other awfully, awfully well. Brian Agler hired Amber Stocks to coach with him in L.A. He's known his her family for a really long time. Her mom worked for him even at the Columbus Quest when he was in the ABL. They go way, way back. Tonight's injury report brought to you by the University of Chicago Medicine. You see Steph Dolson, she is still out with the strained tendon. Kalia Copper, that's a new one. She is out with flu-like symptoms. The thing with Steph, you see, you see her outfit here today, but her walking cast is off. And that's a good sign, and hopefully that means that her return is imminent. <laughs> and, you know, I mean, I, I like the way she dresses now. I love, the, I love to see her style and everything. <laughs> But I'd much rather see her on the court. Those shoes look a lot better with that outfit than the walking cast does. Yes, it does. Yeah. Yes, it does. There's the hometown kid, Candace Parker, who said she has maybe about 20 to 25 family members and friends, including her daughter, who made the trip over to Washington when they've been on the road this whole weekend. It'll be Nador jumping up against Ogumake. Tip goes to Courtney Vandersloot. One thing I want to see the sky do, Lisa, is get to the rim. The Sparks are last in the WNBA in block shots. You can get to the rim against them. Well, one thing that Amber Stocks talked about in the pregame that is an emphasis and telling her team, hey, you might get your shot blocked, but that can't prevent you from taking it to the rack. 
Chicago got a piece on the first possession. Here's Nador, who will turn and face up, spin cycle against Parker for two. Well, Nador turned a five-footer into a 12-footer, but made it look easy. She almost did a full 360 on that move. Candace Parker looking to go backdoor to Ogumike. Now Los Angeles comes into today with a 7-2 overall record. They have won the last three straight, including against Chicago just about seven days ago. As you mentioned in the open, Candace Parker seems to leave a little bit extra in the tank against the Chicago sky. Why not, too? Naperville native. Sims for three, can't get it. Nice defensive start for the sky. Very solid, helping each other out defensively. Good teamwork thus far. Another triple try, that pops out. Courtney Vandersloot shooting a really, really high percentage from three this year. Keep it moving! Keep it moving! In fact, shooting about top five right now in the league from three. Oguma K with a little bit of contact, and they got Gabby Williams with the first personal. Gabby did a great job of moving her feet and being in position, just came slap down on the basketball. Build a wall, go straight up vertical, and make Oguma K score this. Watch Gabby adjust right there but reached in and got the foul. Well, so the story goes, Gabby Williams at 5'11", having to guard a taller post. Oguma K standing at 6'2". Ariel Investments, a proud sponsor of the Chicago Sky. To learn how one of Chicago's most experienced investment firms can help you save for your future, visit arielinvestments.com. You can follow them on Twitter, too, at Ariel Funds. Oguma K and Parker, not your typical posts because they won't always get the back-to-the-basket kind of buckets. They won't face you up. Yeah, and they're very difficult to, to defend. Oguma K plays so hard. Kick out to Alley. Now that's a two just inside the three-point line. Let's start calling her quick draw McGraw. She's got <laughs> the quickest release. Seems like in the league. I like it. A walk in. Odyssey Sims walked with it. How about quick draw quickly? Quick draw quickly. I like that. We got Slooty with the cape. Thank you, Ryan Vickers. Ryan Vickers, yes, on Twitter. Already got that picture out. Yep. We can count on Ryan Vickers every game, can't we? Yeah, so Ryan, quick draw quickly. See what you can do with that. <laughs> the challenge is yours, Ryan. Pull up for the Shields. She was looking for a foul, didn't get it. Here's Parker. You could take it all the way. Kick out to Sims, pulls up, is short. Parker with the putback for her first two. Well, L.A. just, they space you out. You have to pick your poison. You can't stop and hone in on every single player. But when Candace Parker brings the ball up like that, this guy have to rush back and build a wall defensively. Candace Parker, one of the unique players, as she deflects that pass from Alley, literally could play one through five. She can initiate the offense all herself. At six foot five, and so she's just a, very difficult matchup for anybody. Gabby Williams from the out of bounds. Someone lost number 15. I like the energy and the focus so far of the sky in this game. It seems to be really tied in on this end of the floor, especially. Well, they need to. They've dropped as LA has won its last three. Chicago has dropped its last three. Let's look at the out of bounds from Slutty's perspective. Good job by Gabby Williams freeing herself along the baseline. Nice. Cross screen by the sky, losing her defender. A couple of turnovers now for LA. Speaking of turnovers, Gabby just wasn't looking at Diamond. Rookie versus rookie. Diamond the Shields just gets premeditated in her thoughts and moves. And she's having a difficult time adjusting on the fly. I think that will come the more experience she gets at this level. Okumike and Nador tried to swat it, couldn't quite get to it. Now a one-point edge for Chicago. Sloot, and she walked with it. Shuffled her feet a little bit. It's a lot of contact, though. She's talking to the official Jeff Smith, trying to get some love there in the lane. Watch there, Beard kind of gets her. You see Okumike reaching on her arms. No call there. 
And a foul away from the basket. And that's going to be the second on Gabby Williams. Well, that's the, that's the thing when you're guarding Agwumake. She's so aggressive that it's hard to take any time off when you're guarding her. Always moving. She's looking to free her teammates up and always looking to score. Nothing but net, man. It's like a layup drill for Candace Parker when she can get in rhythm like that. We're talking about a championship medal franchise in the L.A. Sparks. It seems like they noticed the intensity the Sky started the game with, and they have matched it here in the last couple minutes. Well, Parker has started out a perfect two for two. She's got five points, five of the eight for L.A. in trouble. And the door has to throw it up. That is not who you want to have it with about 17 feet away with the shot clock winding down. That's a tough possession for the, sky, uh, for the sky. It stayed on one side of the floor. Typically, when that happens, you're going to get lower percentage shots. So Gabby has to check out. She's got two personals. Cheyenne Parker now checks in for the first time. And Parker perhaps playing some of the best as she gets that rebound. Some of the best in, in the bigs across the, the league and the last really four to five games. Yeah, definitely one of the better rebounders if you take minutes per game. Nador knocks down the three. So I like when Nador is aggressive because sometimes she gives up a little bit on the defensive end, but if you can make Candace Parker be you know, honest on the defensive end and make her work, that's a good thing. So that's her first three-point make of the year. She's one of four from the season, by the way, from back there. Sloot thought about it. The trail three attempt for Diamond to Shields, and she hits. Cheyenne Parker running the floor, opened that up for that cross-court pass. Good job by Parker. And Diamond to Shields, of course, coming off a game against Seattle where she hit five three-point makes, a career high so far in her rookie season. To the corner. Neca can't get it. Rebound to Sloop. Well, the Sparks are so fun to watch on the offensive end. They do such a good job Diamond. of sharing the rock. Oh, it's going to take it again. Pull up for Gray. And that's a whole lot of arm fighting for that rebound between the door and Parker. And Parker ends up coming up with it. We will take our first time out in the first quarter. Chicago, a good start, up by four. Well, in the break, you see the emotion here. This is a local basketball team being that was honored, and, and their head coach right there was deployed. He came back from overseas to surprise his team, and so they were honored. They had no idea that he was going to be back. So that was kind of a nice moment in the break. That's a great moment because you can see the ladies all wiping their tears and a little emotional. So that's a great surprise for them, and glad that he made it back safely, and thank you for your service. What a nice story. Happy Father's Day, too, as we said at the top. It was West Central High School that was being honored. You know, a lot of fathers taking this one in. Sure. Like a lot of fathers hoping to see the sky come out here and get a good victory against a tough L.A. Sparks team. You know, when you're struggling, you need all the motivation you can get. Maybe the surprise visit here will lift the sky spirits a little bit. Happy Father's Day to our producer, Todd Benjaminson. Got a couple of camera operators, Carl, Alonzo, who are fathers who are working here today. Yeah. And Candace Parker knocks down the first free throw. But Candace has a lot of fun on the court. She's talking to Diamond the Shields and smiling, talking to people in the stands. 32 years old, two-time national player of the year coming out of high school. She was 95 and four at Naperville High School. That's incredible. <laughs> four losses in your high school career. 
Quigley will miss. And there's Parker with the rebound. A three-time Illinois Miss basketball. That's, that's saying something right there. Talking about the catchings ladies as well in the state of Illinois. So anytime a three-time recipient, that's something. Yeah, Ugumake, look at what I found. Ties it up here at 12. Well, Neka, I've always really respected her approach, not just her talent, look how hard she plays. Well, there's a case in point. Hustle, and she bumped it right off of Cheyenne Parker. That was all Neka Ogumake on that play. And it's all effort, and that that's, becomes contagious for your teammates when your center is out there defending as hard as she can like that. Good things happen. They came up with the turnover. Now Lavender has checked in. This is her first attempt. Well, the sky got to make some hay here. Some subs coming off the bench. Giant oh, nice Parker, move. hello! Taking it to Ogumake on that move. I tell you, Giant Parker is one of the fun-loving women on this team, but she has got a unique focus this season. She is averaging career highs across the board. Kathy Pondexter has checked in. The old Chicago Sky playing against her old mates. Good to see Candace, excuse me, Kathy Pondexter come back home. And rocking the do, letting the hair go. I love it. She was free flowing it in the pregame. Yeah, I mean, you know, she's, Kathy's always had some style and flair about herself and her fashion. She likes to call it the tomboy chic Tomboy style. chic, I like that. That's what she calls it. I had to bite off of that. Yeah. Spent the last three years in a Chicago Sky uniform. Wants to take a chance at trying to win a championship. They will welcome another veteran on this team. They got a bunch. Well, and the thing is, Cappy can come in and, and spot duty and give a scoring punch to a team that you know, could use that off the bench. Lena Coates has checked in. She didn't get any time in the last game against Seattle, but can't get the bunny to fall. Keep it moving. Keep it moving. Keep it moving. I like it, though. Coates, point blank range. She's going to make more of those than she misses. And she's going to continue to put pressure on Ogumake. She can get down there. Jair Faulkner has checked in, guarding Cappy. Since Carson, the triple try. Essence Carson likes to produce music in the offseason. Thank goodness that wasn't string music. Let's <laughs> see what you did there. Parker is a handful so far. Uh, again, that needs to be contagious for the sky. As hard as Cheyenne Parker has been playing his last six games. Well, Ogumake and Candace Parker, all 12 of the LA's first points. We got a foul and a blocking foul on Jamira Faulkner. I really like Chelsea Gray and how she changes pace, but I think she may have got a one, two, three. She got away with the two little steps there. Crowd agrees with you, Mr. Bardo. Avison Young is the world's fastest growing commercial real estate services firm founded in 1978. Avison Young is a collaborative global firm owned and operated by its principals. To learn how you can experience the difference, you can go to avisonyoung.com. Chelsea Gray, I mentioned that she's third in assists per game, fourth in steals per game, coming off an all-star star performance last year. And the thing about the Sparks, they've got four starters who average a steal or more a game, so you really have to be careful handling the basketball. There's a couple of free throws, the first points by someone not named Neko Gumake or Candace Parker. And Cappy Pondexter thought she had a clean steal. So does Brian Agler. <laughs> he's, he's arguing on her behalf. She was in good position, just got a little aggressive on the, on the reach. Happy, of course, returning home. She's got a few, also a few friends and family here in the stands. Played at Marshall High School. 
going on to Rutgers. Marshall Commando, West Side's finest. So good to see Cappy coming back to the city. Fourth all time. And back door to Alley for the easy look. Quick draw, Alley. Now we call him? Quick draw quickly. Quickly, I'm sorry. Quick draw quickly. It's your nickname. <laughs> you gotta get it right. Kathy will pull up. Too strong. And the rebound to Cheyenne Parker. Cheyenne Parker's coming off a 10 point, 10 rebound performance. Fast break opportunity, and the door will go to the line. What a great look by Quigley. I didn't, I didn't think she saw the door at the rim. But Allie, with a nice look off, she does a great job looking away. Look at that pass. The door wishes she could get that one back. Allie's like, yep, I'm looking left, but I'm coming right. Christina Dorr can't make the first free throw. She had a nice game against Seattle. Season high 10 points, season high seven rebounds in 30 minutes of play. Well, and she's coming back later into the season, similar to Ali, or, uh, Courtney Vandersloot. So it takes time to get that timing down in the WNBA. Yeah, both of them played overseas, joined the team late. LA kind of with a similar story. They started out missing their, first, their three centers. Godiva, Lavender, and Parker. Parker was out because of injury. A lot of the teams across the league trying to adjust to movement in their rosters early. And these ladies are tough. If our viewers don't understand that, try going overseas eight or nine months and then coming in and playing a competitive WNBA schedule. No look. Oh! Goodness gracious, sleep to Nador. And I love to see Nador smile like that. Running hard, getting rewarded for her effort. What great job defensively so far by the sky in this first quarter. The pick, can they get a shot off? Time's winding down. This is still the largest lead of the game, 21 to 14. If you don't think real possibilities when you think AARP, then you don't know AARP. You know what, Lisa, the Sky did some great things in the first quarter. The Sky is shooting 56% from the field, but it held the Sparks, four of 16 from the field, one of three from the three-point line. So excellent defensive start for the Sky. Yeah, two of five shooting, two from three. Remember, Chicago only shot three of 23 in the first meeting against L.A. And you talked to Amber Stocks, and she said she liked almost every single one of those three-point looks. They just didn't go down. Yeah, that's, you know, when you that's very rare when you shoot that poorly from three. But yet your coach is like, that's okay. Quana Williams has checked in. She misses her first shot. Again, 12 of the 14 points for LA coming from Ogumake and Parker. Meanwhile, five players for Chicago have scored the 21. Faulkner got stripped. Out and running, here comes Parker against Vandersloot. Dumped off pass to Sims for two. That's a heck of a pass by Candace Parker. I didn't think she saw Sims because of the defender cutting her off, but one hand shovel quickly for a layup. They give up the baseline to Sloot and she'll take it, thank you very much. Well, that's a really high IQ play. She's calling Cheyenne Parker over for a pick and roll. Her defender leans left a little bit. Slooty takes care of the rest. Chicago has jumped out to a 23 to 16 lead. Amber Stocks has said LA had us scouted to a T in that first meeting. So we got a counter here in meeting number two. Here's Sims taking it to her strong side, the left side. Parker with another rebound. I like the fact that she wasn't fouled by the door. 
just using her length to bother the shot. That's all you can do in that situation. Sloot again to finish with the right hand. Back-to-back -back buckets for Courtney Vandersloot. Now you notice, Lisa, the sky are getting to the rim. No shot blockers for L.A. in the game. Williams got hammered by Faulkner. Let's go back and look at the Slutie Buckets. Slutie doing a good job understanding that Parker can block shots, but that's not her forte. And watch how she calls Cheyenne Parker over. Essence Carson is leaning left, and Slutie makes her pay. It's really good recognition by Courtney. Those are all four of Courtney Vandersloot's points here tonight. Sizing it up, that one popped out for Gray. Chelsea Gray shooting just under 30% from three this year. Diamond to Shields lost it on the baseline take. And another turnover for Chicago. That was a heck of a move by Diamond. I mean, she rocked her defender to sleep. Used change of pace. Looked like there was a lot of contact there. I like her aggressiveness. Ball screen for Gray. And a deflection by Diamond. There'll be 10 seconds on the shot clock. Now you see the Sparks changing their offense a little bit. Brian Ackler recognizing the Sky doing a lot of switching on defense. They're going to start to go through some high pick and roll. Try to spread the floor out a little bit. Five now to shoot. Gray with the step back. Man, that's nice. That's similar to a shot she made in Minnesota in the WNBA Finals that won a game for them. 77 to 76 in that opener. They took it to Minnesota in Minnesota. Neka thought she might have gotten a clean block. Instead, she picks up the foul. So, Lisa, what we're seeing right now for the sky, when you have really good intensity, good things happen. When you play hard, you establish a defensive presence. The offensive end becomes easy. That's the second on Neko Gumake. Got it to the free throw line for the first time. Hey, here's a smart tip you can fast break with. Smart thermostats make saving energy easy. ComEd offering a $100 rebate on select smart thermostats. Learn more at comed.com slash rebates. Gabby knocks down both of them. Chicago now three of four from the foul line. So it's a critical juncture here for Gabby Williams. If she can go the next five minutes without picking up that third foul, she can become more aggressive defensively. Yeah, it's going to be tough. They got Gokumake who went down. No call, but look, Neko Gumake. They're going to count it. An and one opportunity. Neko Ogumake fell down, recovered, got the basketball, and subsequently the and one. And Williams knocked it free to allow her to pick it back up, but that's the it, that's the effort of a champion. Neko Ogumake never quits on any play. Eight now for Ogumake to Parker seven. Gray is next in line at four. Largest lead has been nine. The strip from one of the best defenders in the league, Elena Beard, looking to take it. Ogumake with the cleanup job. See, this is the, the championship medal I'm talking about. Get a defensive stop, get an easy bucket. And she's everywhere. Picks up the steal. Second in steals in the league, by the way, right behind Gabby Williams. And the door whistled for the foul. Boy, Chelsea Gray navigated the seas that time. Went up, left, right, got to the rim, drew the contact. Sparks trying to pick up the pace a little bit. Getting very aggressive in the passing lanes. They're starting to get aggressive on Courtney Vandersloot at the top. Sh Cheyenne Parker will check back in. A lot of times if you're, and Courtney knows this, Courtney Vanessa knows this. 
if the defense is pressing you, you have to break the play and, and make them pay. So she put her head down and get to the rim like she did those two opportunities before. Well, she's got a little bit of a scorer's mentality that she is carrying over from last year to this year. Just averaging under 12 points per game. It's actually career high, her 11.8 this year. So not only is she leading the league in assists per game, but she's looking to score a little bit more. And I like that because, you know, I, I think that she sets her teammates up beautifully, and I don't think she's selfish enough. Another second chance opportunity. Rebounding has been a strength, a 14 to 12 edge right now, LA over Chicago. Four to shoot. Parker, step through. Almost got it to go with one hand. She has got every single shot in her arsenal. A lead that was once nine, no longer that. LA has cut it to two. Located inside Hyatt Regency McCormick Place before or after every home game. Just show your ticket stub. That's all you got to do. Hyatt Regency McCormick Place, the official hotel partner of the Chicago Sky. Winchester Arena sitting here in the South Loop. Home now to Courtney Vandersloot with these kind of moves. Yeah, Courtney setting up her backcourt mate with a, a sweet jumper there, the no-look pass. A nice connection to the door at the rim. And then leaving Cars uh, Essence Carson there and then the scoop past Bolenbrook's own Candace Parker. Well, Sloot already five assists, five of the eight assists for Chicago, nearly at her average. And top of the NBA at six assists per game as Williams picks up the personal. What I like about Court Courtney Vandersloot, I like a lot of things about Courtney Vandersloot, but the fact when she returned for her first game, she had eight turnovers. The second game, she only had two turnovers. She's a competitor. She has not come close to eight turnovers since that first game. No, you, you know, it's a timing situation and legs and all that. So we won't, I won't ever expect to see her do that again. She's a competitor. She's going to look to improve her game. A nice little fast break look. Neka Ogumike now with 12. Boy, Giant Parker's running full speed. She's got to get some help. Neko Gumake, when she gets going, gets to the rim. Takeaway. And LA is off and running again. We're tied at 27. Los Angeles looking to take the lead, and it does with the corner three from Williams. Well, they like to strike fast, don't they? Get the defensive glass, push it up, spread the floor. picks up her second. Amber Stocks has said Brian Agler. They obviously know each other well. One of the best head coaches in terms of in-game adjustments. This is the fourth time that she's had to go against her old boss. Yeah, and I'm sure she knows some things that he wants to do, but when you have the type of talent that the Sparks have, it's really difficult to keep them off balance for long. Parker will take it and draws the foul. That is number three on Gabby Williams. So Gabby Williams, you guard Neko Ogumake, and then Gabby Williams, you go ahead and guard Candace Parker. That's your day. And I, you know, she's got some frustration there, but first time around the league, the officials have to get used to you as well. And it's an unwritten rule that you, know, you may not get the benefit of the doubt on those calls. The door's getting set to check in. So it'll be Cheyenne Parker and the door in the front court for Chicago. And guarding the bigs this year has been a problem for Chicago all season long. It has been. And I think Amber Stocks is still working on her rotation up front, especially with Steph Dolson out. It really throws off what the sky would would be optimal in terms of the defensive end. Well, Amber Stocks has certainly shortened her bench in the last few games from what she's been used to doing. Faulkner is well off the mark from three. Take it easy. Oh, good help by Allie Quigley. Chelsea Gray had an open look. 
Williams, she's hit one, that one pops out. Williams now one of three shooting, all three attempts from three. Allie finding Cheyenne Parker, a little fadeaway. I'm okay with that. Still a high percentage shot. She's one of the hotter scores for the sky. Give her some opportunities. Well, she's been in double figures the last five games. That's actually her first miss tonight. No luck, Gray to Parker, step back. That's a two. Here we go, keep playing! Keep playing. Dora did a good job, ran her off the three-point line. That's talent right there. He got an offensive foul. Courtney Vandersloot with the push up. Courtney seems to be getting a little frustrated. She's spending a little extra time speaking to the officials. I think a lot of that has to do with Elena Beard's defense on the ball, one of the premier defenders in the WNBA. Defensive player of the year in 2017. Jantel Lavender is a unique talent at the post position, can shoot the face of three, runs the floor extremely well. And she looks as fit as I've seen her. From College of Ohio State to here in the pros, Beard bringing it up. And Elena Beard has her first point. She's one of three shooting. And Elena Beard, I mean, when you look at her, she looks like a rookie, but she's in her 13th season. Does a great job of staying in shape and being real highly competitive. Really good free agent pickup back in 2012 for the franchise. On the push, here's Gray. Again, the kick out. Williams likes that spot. She's got triple number two tonight. Boy, she's been a breath of fresh air for the Sparks off the bench. She's been very aggressive defensively, and as you said, Starting to feel the rhythm from long range. And this is how quickly L.A. can attack you. They went from down nine to up 12 before that bucket from Faulkner. I like that, Jameer Faulkner. Taking advantage of her foot speed ad advantage over her defender. Lavender for three. Jantel Lavender has not hit a three-point shot this year. The second quarter has been all L.A. 25 to 8 outscoring the home team, and they're up by 10. Illinois Bone and Joint Institute, proud sponsor of the Chicago Sky. For more information, visit IBJIRehab.com. Illinois Bone and Joint Institute, move better, live there better. Appreciate you joining us locally on the U2 here in Chicago. NBA TV tonight. This is the first of two late games across the league. Yeah, so the fathers can sit back and enjoy this exciting WNBA matchups in the evening time. You can enjoy your day, and then 6 Eastern rolls around. What? Sit in front of the tube or in front of your device and watch a little WNBA basketball back-to-back -back games. And, and hopefully, fathers, you got a chance to retire the honeydew list today. Boy, that's a good break for the sky. That's Williams third, I believe. You are correct. She doesn't like that call, but it's like, yeah, she's gonna have to come out of the game. Well, wasn't a lot of contact there. Williams was very surprised, but you gotta put pressure on the defense. Good job getting to the rim. Faulkner rattles one home. Tamira Faulkner scoring average is up a little bit when she plays here at Wind Trust. Points per game. She gets about. Break. Faulkner thought about. And Elena Coates again checking in for the second time. About a minute to play here before the half. Eight point LA advantage. Faulkner hanging hoop in. And drawing another foul, that time on Gray. And Roy Gulbayan is showing exactly where Chelsea Gray hit Jameer Faulkner on the shot, right there on the arm. It's pretty, it's pretty uh, easy call there. 
block from the door. He's having herself an offensive game, too. So Brian Agler doing what successful coaches do. Work the officials as much as they can. Trying to get any advantage that they can get. Faulkner's a perfect coach. Seven of eight in the first half. And nice response by the Skies after going down double digits. Now they're trailing by 12 at one point. Work it around to Beard. Why not? Short. Lady Beard now one of four shooting. See, we would say on the playground, you study long, you study wrong. Lady Beard looked at that shot too long. She is 0 for 2. Normally a 3. Gray to Beard, back to Gray. And you don't see that kind of offensive possession by LA. No, you don't, because usually they have players that can break you down off the bounce. But again, the Sky have been very solid defensively, really. This is the best help defense I've had this season. One of the bright spots in this first half, a Stu Nador for Chicago, who joins us now. And are there, you have to take on an Oguma K and Parker. They're combining for 23. What kind of adjustments? I think we need to get back. Yeah. Well, thank you for the time. Yeah. A student adorer leading all score or leading Chicago, I should say, with eight points, three of five shooting, eight points in the four rebounds. At halftime, here between L.A. and Chicago. Rookie, Gabby Williams. Don't miss it. Chicago Sky Basketball is brought to you in part by Magellan Corporation. Chicago Sky. The last three looking to head home. They got a tight turnaround, by the way. They're taking the red eye after this game. And then they got another game on Tuesday coming up. Yeah, so they, the, 
the middle of the WNBA season can prove to be challenging at times. This veteran ball club seems to know how to right the ship. Talk about, talk about the sparks. <laughs> I'm with you, man. I'm with you. You saw Gabby Williams walk out on the court. She will get the start here in the second half. Keep an eye on that matchup. She is assigned right now to Neka Ogumike. She's got three personal fouls here to begin this second half. And right away, they go right at that matchup. Neka coming over. Nador has Gabby's back. And that's, that's what we saw in the first quarter where the sky were connected defensively. Good job by Nador coming over on the block. She's got a couple of those tonight. Both of these teams beginning with the same starting lineups to begin this second half. Ogumike from about 15 feet. That's just not fair. Ogumike is almost impossible to stop one on one on the box and then spaces the floor and able to stick the jumper. Leads the team scoring, rebounding, field goal percentage, steals per game, minutes per game, does a little bit of everything for LA. Diamond was looking for the door. Another turnover for Chicago in the first possession. Make it 11 now in the game. Look how the spark space the floor. They just go into some read and react situation. Parker walked with it. She had the door in the air, but she shuffled her feet. Doesn't get the hometown call on that. No, and it's funny because her mother's walking right behind us, and I think she had something to say to the referees about that call or perceived missed call. Allie trying to fight off Sims finds Courtney Vandersloot. And Allie's been quiet. Four points, two of six shooting. But we've seen that in the last few games where teams are face guarding her, double teaming her, triple teaming her. And again, a touch for Ogumike. Follow from Beer, can't get it. Boy, the Sky were fortunate that time. The Shields to the door, blocked from behind from Gray. Chelsea, Gray, Sky, and I. but net little string music for Chelsea Gray. Effective here on both ends for LA to start the second half. Danger zone for the sky right here. I know our viewers hear me say it all the time. First five minutes, second half, most important. Well, they're looking for Alley, a little too strong. Diamond to Shields has the right idea on a lot of that same play. But can't connect all the time with the receiver. Yeah, it's just a, it's a step off or it's a, you know, it's a beat off or something like that. It's, She's got good intentions, but has right here. had a difficult time right connecting. Here. Well, first half, we saw her trying to go back door to Gabby Williams. Gabby just wasn't looking at her. And she threw the pass anyhow. 10-point advantage. Largest lead has been 12 in the second quarter. Somehow, Sims finding Greg. Looked like they had locked up Odyssey Sims. She's got eyes in the back of her head. She sure does. Lead back up to 12, and three minutes in, that has forced an Amber Stocks T.O. Well, Sky got to find a way to stabilize this run. We saw a 25 to 8 run in the second quarter. Seen a similar run here to start the third. Amber Stocks calling a 20 second timeout, not a full timeout. Here's another look. They're locking up Sims. I mean, you can't be in any better defensive position than Gabby Williams was, but on the backside, Sky defense falling asleep. I see Sims traded from Dallas in February of 2017. LA has made some big moves kind of in the offseason the last couple of years, picking up some free agents, drafting the likes of Maria Vadiva. They're really excited about where we have not seen, even seen her yet today, but the 11th pick overall, they're excited about the future that she can bring to LA. Yeah, you know, the LA Sparks, 
we keep saying it, championship franchise. And they're going to do what they need to do to stay elite. Ryan Ackler and the staff of the Sparks, they've tasted success, and they're greedy. Only lost twice. At Connecticut, that was a 102 to 94 scoring bonanza in that game, and then they dropped one to Seattle, 88 to 63. Minnesota, part of the storylines in this league, where the Lynx are sitting in eighth place right now, they just don't have the bench. It seems like this year that they have in years past. That's correct, and you know they also had some unfortunate bounces, three last second loss. One to, one to Atlanta and one to the It shows you how hard it is to stay at the top of the league. Connecticut, a great story. Sitting at the top of the league. Phoenix, you can watch them play after this one. They've won the last seven. Sitting in second place right behind L.A. at a 9-3 and three overall record. And now Chicago off the hands of Gabby Williams and turnover, another one, it might be reversed. Initially, they said it was it. LA basketball. They're gonna say it was tipped off LA last. So Sky need to take this fortunate bounce their way and convert. Eight seconds on the shot clock. Sloot to Nador. Drills it. That was an excellent out of bounds play. Looked like Allie Quigley was going to come off the screen. She circled back and, and pinned down the screen. The door's defender allowing her an open jump shot. Love that play. She's at 10 points now. She averages six. Alex Montgomery has checked in for the first time in this game. Okumake just avoiding the contact, avoiding the shot blocker. And Ogumike's got 16 points, doing some shot blocking back on the other end. Yeah, Gabby Williams just forcing the issue right there. The veteran building the wall without fouling. Corner try, won't fall for Sims. Sims gets it right back for two. Now, for a team like the Sky that's struggling, when they start to get behind like that, you start to see them lose a little bit of their intensity. They've got to have somebody pick it up. Sims with four points now. That's a triple try for Nador, who's still looking for her first three-point make of the year. Out front it, Sims. Body, bucket, and one. Well, the Sparks are a connected team, aren't they? They know that any one of the five players, if they get the defensive last, they run. Sims gets behind the D. Beats Alley to the rim. Oh, you said it was danger zone. It is a 12 to 2 edge in this third quarter for LA. And it's so important shot selection when you're trying to stop a run. I know the door was open from the three. She didn't seem on balance, and that's a tough look when you're trying to get a much needed bucket. It's been tough for Ali. They've made it tough. The two won't fall. Two of seven shooting for Ali Quigley on the transition. Odyssey Sims. Big third quarter for her. Ali Quigley's got to stay in front of Sims in that situation. She kind of bailed out. Six of Odyssey's eight points coming in this third quarter. Second chance won't fall for Parker. Cheyenne, that is. Here's Candace. Chelsea Gray will go to the foul line. Back to Alex Montgomery. Oh, the Sparks have sucked all the energy out of the building. Just a relentless commitment to running the floor is what you're seeing here in the third quarter by the L.A. Spark. They can get you in bunches, often, quickly, all that. M&M Limousine Service, our employees and chauffeurs understand the importance of delivering exemplary service throughout every ride, whether your destination is 20 minutes or two hours. M&M Limousine Service will assure you are in control on time and enjoying your journey. 
Looks like the Sparks had some peanut M&Ms at halftime with all this did energy you, coming did out. Did you see peanut M&Ms? I saw plain of them. No, I saw peanut. But you know, the peanuts themselves have a little bit of energy as well. <laughs> Dude, how about that? To give Chicago a little bit of a boost. Largest lead is 20. Baseline J for Sims, missing badly. Got to convert here. Faulkner's on the move. Oh, great pass. Yeah, great pass. Parker can't finish. It's a mismatch. Candace Parker on Jamera Faulkner. She's trying to post her up. Faulkner, all she could do was just wrap her up. That's a third on Jamera Faulkner. Well, Candace Parker recognized that mismatch right away. And just tried to beeline to the rim, and Jamera just kind of gave her a bear hug. I said, and told Candace, I know you're home, but I can't let you have this one. <laughs> Mouse in the house not going to open up the door that time. <laughs> Just takes a couple plays here, a couple defensive stops for the energy to pick up for the sky and have some good effect on the other end as well. Lavender can't get it. Shovel pass, Elena Coates wrapped up. A diamond drawing two defenders in it. Really difficult pocket pass. And watch the vision. Keeps her head up. Nice shovel pass between the defense and Elena draws the foul. See if Elena Coates can get some confidence on this free throw line. And Coates did not play against Seattle. Tough, especially for the rookie post. That's one thing that Amber Stocks talked about in the pregame is the development. Very rarely, maybe a Candace Parker is, is the one exception or Neka Gumake is the one exception, but post going from the collegiate level to the professional level, there is so much of an adjustment to make. There's no doubt about it. The speed of the game, the, the responsibilities of post players at the WNBA is much greater than that at the college level. A lot of pick and roll coverage that you have to do here at this level that is not necessarily double team coming to Lavender, who finds Sims nicely. Well, the Sparks just play beautiful basketball. They play off one another. There's a double team. They cut to the rim, and they just play really good basketball. Well, Lavender read that double team perfectly. The Shields with the bucket. Diamond DeShields has been quiet. Averages in double figures. She's got seven. Three of seven shooting. You got your double figure score in DeShields and your double figure score in Quigley. Your one, two top scorers who are in single digits here still. Going for the back door. Ogumake, another right place, right time. And another bucket for LA. This guy's got to come up with that basketball. He got the deflection. Three ladies started running down the floor. No one came up with the rock. Another touch, step through move for Coates. Got the foul call. So that's two fouls. Elena Coates is drawn in the paint just this quarter. So good activity off the bench for Elena. And that is the third on NECA. I like the attitude of Elena Coates. I do as well. Going right out of Gumake. I mean, you know, I'm sure she read where this, the sparks are lasting in, in the WNBA and block shots. So if she gets point blank range, she can do some damage. Hey, Sky fans, in a world where nobody waits for anything, why do so many travel sites make you wait for rewards? Not Orbits. Book your next trip with Orbits and score instant rewards every time just like that. First miss from the free throw line for Coates. Three or four tonight. Well, I like that. Lavender, Cheyenne Parker mixing it up a little bit. Right. Okay, giving it up. And three a three seconds. second Cut. violation. Lavender popping a tent. Three second violation. 
camping out there a little bit. So now the sky once again get an opportunity. And right now, Coates has drawn two consecutive fouls. We know Cheyenne Parker's playing with a lot of confidence. See if we can get one of those ladies involved here on this offensive possession. Guy's in trouble now, eight seconds, and Coates walked with it over on the sideline. Needed some help, couldn't quite get it. And Coates is not used to getting in that triple threat position. If she gets lower, gets the ball up near her head, then NECA can't crowd her like that and force a turnover. 14 turnovers led to 18 points off those turnovers. Under two to play here in the third. Cappy will take it. Another rebound for Diamond to Shields. Four of them now. Coates again. I'm okay with that. Great post position. A tough shot. I don't, I don't, I was really surprised she was able to get that on the rim. Dexter's looking for that bucket. Cappy can't get it to fall. So Gabby Williams, the steward in the door, will check back in. Maybe Cheyenne Parker and Elena Coates gave some good minutes coming out. They did. Put a lot of pressure on the defense at the rim. Well-deserved break by both of them. Nice play, another and one. Lavender will get a chance. Well, Jantel Lavender was a prolific scorer at Ohio State. Samantha Prahalis was the point guard on that team. Jantel doing a really good job. That's a nice banana cut through the lane. Go to her offhand off glass. I'll tell you what, those Buckeye teams, that's what you wanted to have. The inside outside combination of those two i'll tell you what samantha prahalis was one of my favorite players she was in college she was an unbelievable score as was jantel shot clock violation not going to count that they're going to review it but it seemed to me fairly obvious that shot was taken after the shot clock expired i agree with you lisa and i don't even think they're going to even go to the monitor Oh, they're going to review at the break. So just to keep the play going. So they're going to count the basket, I believe, for now, and then they'll review it. Just under a minute to play. The third quarter has complete. Diamond heating up a little bit. That's for three. Her second three-point make of the night. And if she can kind of step into a three-point shot off the bounce, she's going to be hard at defend. Look how the floor spacing of the Sparks is right now. Allows them so many dribbled penetration lanes. Chicago wants to push. Diamond, why not? Second chance opportunity, Nadorno. And LA can hold for one shot. Good energy that last possession didn't convert. But that's the type of effort will get you back in the game. Chantel Lavender for three. A big second quarter for L.A. A big third quarter for L.A. Outscoring Chicago 24 to 12 and leading 63 to 45 as we head to the fourth. Chicago Sky, we're going to revisit this story. This team, a high school team, West Central High School, honored in one of the breaks in the first half. That is your head coach, Justin Vineyard. He was deployed. The team didn't know that he was going to be in the house tonight. He completely surprised them. And you can see the emotion of that moment earlier in the first half. And that shows you not only the emotion, but 
what sports does for teams and coaches and such a unifying thing. Great to see him come back safely after serving his country. Well done. And that is my favorite move of the night moment of this season so far. I agree. I totally agree. Great job. Scott Staff setting that up. Yeah, pure unbridled emotion. Start of the fourth quarter. And Chicago has a little bit of catch up to do. 12 points in the second quarter, 12 points in the third quarter. That's after opening up this game with 21 in the first quarter. Again, they take care of the basketball and get to the rim. And kudos to Elena Beard and Odyssey Sims who have been defending. They've really made her uncomfortable trying to to deny her the basketball, and then when she gets it, really closing the space defensively so she doesn't have op room to operate. It's been a rough stretch here for Chicago as of late. Took a West Coast road trip 0 for 3. Here's the rookie. Our first look at Maria Vadiva. That's a heck of a move. The Diamond Shields doesn't come down and poke it away. That would have been an easy layup. She's been a Russian pro player since 2014, played in the Premier League and the Euro Cup. She turns 20 in July. And again, like I said, awfully lots of potential, gets the offensive rebound, can't finish. And she just joined the team. Boy, Slutty was money with those shots last year a lot of times. Coming off the break, able to stop top from three. Hadn't been able to find the range yet. Step back. This could be trouble. Gray trying to back down Courtney Vandersloot. Allie quickly came over for the double team. And it's going to be Courtney Vandersloot with the foul. That's her second. Chelsea Gray likes to fade away, but she had a size advantage and puts her head down, continues to get to the rim. LA so good at finding the mismatches. Yes, they are. And you know, I, I think that a lot of players would love to play for Brian Agler because they read and react, Lisa. They don't run a lot of set stuff. So they can flow into offense. Like you said, they can find the mismatch and go right at him. Gray, who has become one of the better point guards in the league, really worked on her body in the last few years. She's fitter than you've ever seen. Jantel Lavender is fitter than you've ever seen. I mean, the commitment of these ladies goes un, un, not talked about enough in my opinion. And Chicago can't even get the wide open two look. 18 point advantage. Right now through the sky, you want to get to the six minute mark and cut into this lead by four or six points. Can't get it all back at once, but just chip away at it. The Diva whistled for the bump. She came in late. She was playing with the Euro League, the final four, came in late April. Or they thought that she would come in maybe a little bit earlier. They've some traveling complications, but a big, big, big talent. Many even expected her or thought that she could even be a lottery pick. Well, you're talking about her size and her youth. And we saw when she had the basketball, she made her initial move and was at the rim. It was just good defensive play, so you can see why they're so high on her. Played overseas in the same league as Neko Ogunike, Angel McCautry, Epiphany Prince, some of the names recognized from the WNBA. Parker drawing the contact on the door. And Candace Parker knows exactly what she's doing in that scenario. She was really just trying to draw the contact. Watch how she reaches in. Watch this. Right there, drawing the contact from the door. It's a veteran player getting to the line. 
Got that elusive championship back in 2016 as the finals MVP. Two-time league MVP. Rookie of the year way back when. 10 years, she, this is her 11th season in the league. It's amazing, isn't it? And, yeah, I get selfish because I don't like these ladies getting older. I want them to stay the same age. <laughs> you know, especially if a player as talented as Candy. Gabby sizing it up. The door battling for it. You know, Gabby's just taking opportunities now. Didn't think she was in rhythm. She's just forcing the issue at this point. To the corner, Williams is short. And the Shields getting tied up. She was in, ooh, in trouble. Diamond, the Shields doing a good job boxing out. Just couldn't clear the defensive blast, but did a good job of keeping her body on her opponent. Gabby's had to work for her every single minute of playing time tonight. Well, Gabby was going to have a tough matchup regardless. She's going to have to guard Oguma K or Candace Park. I mean, pick your poison in that scenario. Parker oh, hesitation. Oh, no, she did. Good block by Endor. The door. Allie lets it fly. Been a long time since we've seen an Allie quickly bucket. And, and you know what? Get out on the break. Get back before the defense can get set up. You get shots like that. Brian Agler this time will call the timeout. 15 point edge. Still plenty of time. We've seen some crazy comebacks in this league. Seven minutes to go. The limit when you plan a party at the Re Saks Recreation Center, a 100,000 square foot facility to meet your event needs. Saks Recreation Center, the official training center of the Chicago Sky. Defense leading to offense, Stu Nador. Well, Candace Parker was trying a 9.9 .9 degree of difficulty shot, and Nador was like, not here, not on my watch. Excellent job advancing the basketball. Allie Quinn getting up. Rare open look. And the door's got three blocks, 320. Sitting at 17 right now. Jamira Faulkner, a little circus shot. Jamira. This evening, and hopefully that can. Points for Odyssey Sims coming in. in the second half. She had eight in the third quarter. Faulkner again. Look out. Oh, Jameer knows what, what's going to get this team back in the game. Defensive stop and some easy buckets. Chicago has not been able to put many consecutive stops back to back to back, and it's because you have those kind of weapons on the other side. Yeah, and they play so well together. They give Neko enough space where she can operate. A 20-point game for Neko Gumake, and another rebound. She's got a double-double, 20 points, 11 rebounds. Candace Parker, 13 points, 11 rebounds. Here is the one-two combo. Candace. L.A. is pulling away. And Candace is asking to come out of the game. She looks a little winded. But it's funny, when tired players get the basketball, they find some oxygen. And Candace part that getting it up on the rim and getting the friendly bounce.
to sit out Candace Park when you got a 20 point lead with five minutes to go. And you got Nichols, Agwomike on the court, and Jantel Lavender. Nice inside out combination. Parker gets the touch and goes right at Lavender. So again, at this juncture, it doesn't look like the sky can erase a 20-point deficit at this point, but you still want to build good habits. Cheyenne Parker doing a good job getting to the line. Tequila Paris is proud to be the exclusive tequila for the Chicago Sky. Tequila Paris enjoy life to the fullest responsibility. Cheyenne Parker likes this challenge going up against Ogumake. She misses the second free throw. There is no hesitation. She's going to the bucket when she touches the basketball. I think Cheyenne Parker is on a, a quest this season to get some respect. Faulkner counted. Body bucket and one. See, once again, Cheyenne's gotten to the rim. And Jamira Faulkner has lived at the rim in the second half. Good stuff is happening as a result. Like Jameer coloring the locks. Just, you know, nice fade on the side and the locks get a little color to them. You probably have the two best hairstyles guarding each other with Cappy and Jamira. <laughs> Right. That tandem. Here is Kathy. Switched off Diamond to Shields now on her. Odyssey Sims. Parker with another board. Quietly, Jamira Faulkner has been outstanding help side defense here this evening. She's going to look for it to take it again. Out to Cheyenne Parker for two. Let's see, look, now Diamond the Shields is denying the inbounds pass, so now they've got some energy. Good stuff happening right now. This one is not out of reach. 14-point advantage. Shots on Chelsea Gray. One more look. Well, I think it's an excellent call because Diamond Shields is still moving, but Scott deserves a break at this point. <laughs> I'm calling. I'm, I'm not so sure that's why Gray got the call. <laughs> well, you got to remember now the last game the Sparks dropped a 20 point lead. We were able to recover and beat Washington. Looks like the same thing is happening right now. Look out. Here come. Sparks have been unable to close the door here and their last That's game hot. on the road hot. against Washington. So. Gray, a big three point make for the Sparks. LA needed that one bad. Faulkner again. Jamira eating up this LA D. Get to the rim at will. And she continues to do that and get some stops. This could get interesting. Momentum on Chicago's side. Three minutes to go. Game brought to you by Ariel Investments. At Ariel, we believe slow and steady wins the race. No slow and steady with this alley -oop. Nice connection between Slooty and the door. The no look, perfect level on the pass. That's our Ariel Investments play of the game. You know what I love about that story is the fact that those two didn't even know each other until this year. In fact, when they both came from overseas, they both joined Chicago at the same time. And it's like they just met each other three days before that first game. So that, that tells you that Slooty, high-level point guard, knows where she needs to get the ball to be successful. And on the move, no look. She makes it look easy, but Slooty making some really difficult plays here this, at, this evening. And quick to develop the chemistry and the connection yep. with those new players. That's what a good point guard does, right? That's right. And I think that road trip, when they first got back on the team, helped them 
go out to dinner, you, you, you hear interests of different players. Well, Gray chasing it down, but there's five seconds on the shot clock. Amber Stocks wanted it over and back. Don't get the shot off. It's a shot clock violation anyhow, so it's a turnover anyhow. But Amber Stocks wanted the turnover called about six seconds prior to that. She's She's been a, a little bit in disagreement of what the officials are doing here this evening. That's a very nice way to put it. Yeah. But the sky, I mean, they could get it to 10. Back door, look! Chicago's not going away. Great look. And see, here's the energy, and it's all been predicated by Jamira Faulkner getting to the rim and then the defense picking up. Faulkner has been huge. She's got 17 points. A bunch coming in the last few minutes in this fourth quarter. Ogumake to Sims. Watch Gabby running the floor. Diamond will pull up from all digits in this game. They're going to give her a two, but they're going to review it. They called a two on the floor. And so they're going to go back. Roy Goban will take a look at the monitor. And I think Roy Goban got it right. I thought her foot was on the line when she elevated for that shot. But regardless, the Sky have the momentum now. And where I thought a 20-point deficit was not going to happen, it proved me wrong. Yeah, her foot is definitely on the line. But it's good to see her get her confidence going. She struggled in the first half, didn't really get a lot of attempts. And Cheyenne Parker just do, getting enough of Chelsea Gray to create the space for the jump. Again, the largest lead has been 20 in this game. And so they ruled this a two. I think they'll probably keep it a two. Uh, They're I, seeing what we're seeing. I, I think Roy Goban was all over that call right there. And regardless if it's a two or three right now, the Sky have to go back out and reestablish that defensive pressure. And they're doing exactly that. They keep it as a two. 77 to 68 is your score. 144 left to play. Is there enough time for Chicago to make this comeback? At least I'm a little puzzled because you're, you had a great observation. You said Candace Parker was limping a little bit. I thought she would come back in the game when the Sky made their run. She is still not in this game. Yeah, it looked to me like she was favoring her left leg. And the timeout is called on the L.A. side, 22nd time. And you see she's got ice bags on those knees. Yeah, so she, she's done for the evening, barring something crazy happening. But it's a little unusual to see that in this situation. I think they relaxed with up 20 points like they did against the Mystics the other night. So no Candace Parker. LA's gonna have to pull this out without her. It'll be Gabby Williams, Courtney Vandersloot, Cheyenne Parker, Diamond DeShields, and Jamira Faulkner. For the sky. And for LA, Beard and Lavender, Sims, Ogumake, and Greg. The sky have to be connected here because the sparks, in my opinion, are gonna go to Ogumake. He's got the foot speed advantage on Cheyenne Parker. Gonna have to have some help defense here in this situation. Williams this time defending Lavender. As you said, Cheyenne Parker on Ogumake. They're gonna take their time. Shot clock winding down to 11. Here comes Ogumake with the screen. Gray, oh. the pull-up, ice in her veins. No doubt about it. That was one of the better defensive possessions for this guy here in the second half, but that's a tough competitor right there. You 
need a big bucket. Chelsea Gray is going to deliver for you time and time again. Well, Gabby Williams made the right move trying to get to the rim. There was some contact. She just didn't get the call. We're all right, we're all right. Well, Chicago needs the ball back. Trailing by 11, giving Sims all kinds of trouble. There's the pick for Faulkner. Takes it the distance, nine point advantage. And the, I think the sky needs to press full court in this scenario. They don't have enough time to sit back and wait. I agree. No foul here so far. Time is ticking away. 11 on the shot clock. Gray to the corner for Beard. Pump fake, one dribble, pull up is good. Big bucket after big bucket down the stretch. Well, they had the sky in the scramble situation. They made the right play. Elena Beard, the veteran, comes up big. And that is just the second basket for Elena Beard tonight. Only averages four points a game. This comeback here in the fourth quarter has really kind of been sparked by uh, many players, but one Jamira Faulkner, especially here in the final quarter. He's got to the rim, recognizing even though the Sparks had six blocked shots on the evening, he is challenging them at the rim. And what happened, that transferred over to the defensive end and got them back in this game. If you follow her on social media, her Twitter handle is called The Come Up and it's because that's part of her story, is the come up and the growth and the development that she has made from her time at Southern Mississippi to now as a pro. And she's overcome a major injury to come back, and, and she looks like she hadn't lost in a step at all. I like Sloot and Faulkner playing together. They got Allie in the backcourt as well as Diamond to Shields. They got their shooters in. They need them, trailing by 11. Time is winding down here for Chicago. And Chicago calling its last timeout. 20 seconds. Well, Scott took a lot of time in that possession, didn't get a shot off it. But again, I like what I've seen. They could have easily quit when they were down 20. They cut the lead at single digits. You know, this is the best team in the WNBA right now, so this has got to be good building blocks for this Sky Ball Club. Well, Chicago coming into tonight, like I said, they dropped their last three to Phoenix, at Los Angeles, at Seattle. And with a win here tonight, LA will have won four straight, improving to eight and two. Allie's got it. Bill McKay switches off on her. Cyan Parker, second attempt. And L.A. calls the timeout. To Looking to run a specific play here in the half-court set. And Las Vegas. Eight Eastern tip scheduled for that one. Boy, if you have not seen Asia Wilson play, you are missing out. Oh my goodness, what a talented rookie. And she's living up to the hype, isn't she's she? Sure. Oh my, man, fun to watch. This could find a possession, and Neko Ogumake is just gonna sit out and in the corner. Last move. That's gonna do it. Classy move by the Sparks right there. Two head coaches that know each other well. Brian Agler and Amber Stocks shaking hands. And LA has now won four straight to improve to eight and two. And keep their hold atop the WNBA standings. We will wrap things up after this. Tonight's player of the game brought to you by Magellan Corporation, a proud sponsor of the Chicago Sky. How about Jamira Faulkner off the bench in the fourth quarter? I think she was outstanding getting to the rim, gave the team some needed energy. Hopefully that can carry over to Tuesday night. Well, Chicago tried to give it a go in the fourth quarter, but fallen short to the best team right now in the WNBA. That'll do it here from Wintrust Arena. Some really good moments. This was one of them during the game.
Next telecast will be Tuesday, 6 p.m. The Sky take on Elena Deladon and the Washington Mystics. For Stephen Bardo, our entire Sky broadcast crew, I'm Lisa Byington. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers tuning in to this telecast and enjoy the rest of your Sunday night.